Hey guys, Shanti Fo up here on our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shop Mirror today. They gonna go out today, few things came out, few things are on sale today. Today though, the big things that release is uh, you know the Pet Cemetery remake, and I know uh, Best Buy has an exclusive steelbook of that one. Uh, the film Little, that one comes out today, as well as High Life. Also, one thing that comes out today, which is really cool, is the Shark Bait collection, which is the sixth film collection. This is from Mill Creek. But the thing that's really really cool about this one is the one film, one of the films that they include in here is the film Go Shark the movie that I'm in so that one finally has a US DVD release so if you guys get to check out this set and you know guys get to watch Ghost Shark let me know what you guys think but so glad this one you know the Ghost Shark now finally has a release and we talk about this more at the end of this video as well in the review portion there's also a whole bunch of other um, new um, Mill Creek releases I'm talking about but also though at the end of this video is also a whole bunch more uh, brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys some really really cool stuff so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video and as as always, too, let me know in the comments below. You know what you guys thought of the new, you know, new DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. And if you guys have seen any of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into the under construction target we go. But bad sign, looking as if they didn't change out any of the new releases here. It's all stuff like Dumbo from like like, like a week or two back or two weeks back. Yep, absolutely. Nothing changed out in here. And look how, like I was saying this last week, look how small the section is. It's now, it's just like right here, it's, you know, uh, Blu-rays and DVDs, and right here, and then on this new release rack, and they kind of mixed all the kids and everything together. But, so it's not even, and then like right here, that's it. But yeah, nothing new was changed out. It's only this little thing to change now, because it it's not like all spread throughout. But even in the front though, this is all the same stuff as well, you know, Dumbo and everything. And that was like, I think two weeks ago or so, I believe that one came out. But yeah, it's not changed here either though. But I did want to let you guys know some really, really cool news. I just got cast in this new movie called 16 Bits, which is an action comedy film with some horror elements to the movie as well. It also has a real like 80s style throwback vibe to the movie. It should be a really, really cool movie. Uh, but they have an Indiegogo up, and I'll have a link below so you guys can see the video, you know, talking about the project, what it's about and everything. And they also have like on the Indiegogo, it's a funding site, so you guys are interested in, you know, helping to contribute to the project or anything like that. I'll have a link below for that one. Also, though, when I'm shooting the, the movie as well, I'll be doing like an on-set video blog as well, you know, showing you know the set and everything that I do uh, while I'm there. But like, definitely, if you guys are interested, check out the link below for that. Into Walmart we go. But in today, like I was saying, the big thing that came out was the Pet Cemetery remake, and I actually thought this was a pretty decent remake for the most part. I didn't absolutely love it though, but there was some cool aspects to it. But um, that one for on 4K is $27.96. They also have this double collection here, which includes the original film as well as the new movie, and that one's $27.96 as well for that. But if you guys just wanted the new movie, you know, on its own though, um, that one is uh, $19.96 for that, and then it's uh, $17.96 for the, the DVD of that one. Also, though, here the other ones that came out today was like I said, the movie Little, and that one here is uh, $22.96. And this was a fun movie about this one character who ended up like it had like a kind of like a hex put on her, and she ended up it was like uh, you know Regina Hall's character was the boss of her company, and this kid put this curse on her, so she woke up the next day as a kid, and she had to like deal with being a kid again. She, when she was a kid, she had like terrible luck and like no friends, and it was like some of the worst years of her life. So she's kind of having to deal with that again this thing here though has a thing about um Pet Cemetery here, and this is like I guess like a version, like a voodoo version, which in, that one includes Pet Cemetery 2. So I don't know if that's in HD that one, but hopefully at some point I think I've heard somewhere someone was mentioning that it might be coming to Blu-ray. I don't know for sure though. They did announce though Paramount's putting out Adam's Family Values on Blu-ray, which I can't wait. That's fine, you know, finally coming out. Like I said though, this was a fun movie. This one is really cool. They have in here though the Rob, Rob, Robert Pattinson movie here, High Life. This is a really really super trippy movie. I absolutely love this movie it's not it's one of those movies though that's not gonna be for everybody not everyone's gonna love this movie because it's really out there it's kind of like a almost like a tree of life vibe in space and it's about him up in space with these group of these people and there's like a kind of um experiments going on up there but you know it's one of those ones I really really love this one just like I said such a super visual movie very cool film also though here today this one on uh, Mar Mar Majin uh, the Worm Valley that one released today and that 
one's twelve ninety six, and we talked about that one at the end of this video as well. Also, though, the um, new Johnny Depp film, The Professor, came out. This movie's got like some mixed reviews and everything, but I like this one. This is about Johnny Depp's character, who's this this college professor, and he finds out that he has this terminal cancer and you know terminal lung cancer, and he only has like a year left tops. It's kind of about him when he finds this out, him like making these sort of changes about his whole life and all these things that he does and everything but I really like this movie it was like one of those movies it's like a like, you know like a dark comedy you know because it's got like um, dark aspects to what's going on as well as like comedy stuff and it's also really sad as well there's some really sad stuff in here but I really like this one this one I definitely think you guys should give a chance to I thought was really pretty good these ones though were last week this Jack Hunter one I didn't see it out last week but that I believe that was last week as well as that El Dorado uh, Temple in the Sun but over here, though, they do have one thing that I am going to get. Um, and, you know, this is one of those movies, you know, this, it's only 1996. And I think on Best Buy, it's, it's going to be like 1896. It was on their website, so I might be able to get it even a, a dollar cheaper. But I think Best Buy also has a steelbook of this. But I didn't love the image, though, on the steelbook. I thought it was kind of cool. Like, I looked at pictures online, but I didn't absolutely love it. This one, though, I already have the Arrow video release. But this is the 4K one. But this is one of those movies, I've, you know, I've always really loved this movie. And it's like, I've watched this movie so many times. I especially love Kim Coates' character in here. You know, the paper. Have you ever seen so much paper? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Is this one of those movies? I pro it's probably one of my most watched movies for some reason. I've watched this so many times. But I'm definitely going to get this one for 4K. Because, I don't know, I've always liked this movie. Also, though, 4K-wise, uh, you know, Hulk, that one came out today as well. This one, I have not seen this movie in years though it's been a really long time since i watched that but like i said definitely going to get this one but yeah so glad they did have this one though in store but over here though in the actual section though i showed this stuff last week where there's a couple empty spots and i think this one was one of the ones i didn't remember seeing out on the shelf last week this one here called runaway romance other than that let's see if there's any other ones that i didn't remember seeing on the shelf anywhere you know put out last week I, I believe these ones were not put on the shelf last week either. This one, Shadow Wolves, as well as, you, you know, Ulysses, A Dark Odyssey. I don't remember seeing that one last week. And then this one, you know, uh, came out today. This is one of the Mill Creek releases. This one here, uh, with Stephen Baldwin, called Run. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the major things in here that I missed last week. I don't see anywhere uh, Gotham Season 5. That was one of the things that came out today. And that might have been, maybe been in that spot or that one. They don't have it in here. But as far as I can tell, I don't see that one anywhere over here, though. But I am going to be talking about the complete Gotham, you know, Blu-ray set, though, at the end of this video. Yeah, so I ended up getting that Waterworld in there. Those wondering, though, about price matching, though, I didn't realize that they don't actually price match. You know, Walmart doesn't price match anywhere but their own website anymore so I guess like they, I don't know how long ago they got rid of that but I always remember them doing that but I guess it must be recently or something like that or I haven't price matched in a while but yeah only it would have been a dollar difference and it said in Best Buy this this edition wasn't available in there anyway so yeah like I said I, even though I know that people don't love this movie it's one of those movies I actually really really love and watch so many times throughout the years and this past weekend I saw a couple of different films and the first one that I saw was the film Midsummer. I, I think that's how you say it or, or just Midsummer, but it's you know from the same director who did the film Hereditary, which I really, really loved Hereditary. That was such a creepy, creepy movie. This one, though, I thought was just as cool. It's like a little different, though. It's more of a like a like the vibe of the original Wicker Man. That's like the kind of vibe it is. It's essentially, though, about a group of these friends who are going to Sweden for the summer. And it's essentially, though, like um, they're going there with their one friend who's from this area where it's like this small kind of cutoff community, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And like he's like telling them how there's all these activities that happen there and they all dress up and all kind of things happen. And, you know, they all go there. And it's essentially, though, about, you know, them getting to this this festival that, the you know, his family and friend, the, their friend from Sweden's you know family and friends put on in their village out there in the middle of nowhere. And of course, though, it's essentially them coming to find out that there's some weird weird things going on out there don't want to say anything more about it but I really love the movie it was a really really out there movie and if you guys like things like you know the original Wicker Man movies that are kind of weird like um 
you know, kind of odd, like, um, films about weird communes and weird communities and that kind of stuff, definitely check it out. It's just a really, really creepy movie. So well filmed. Uh, you know, cinematography in that movie was amazing. The other one that I saw was, you know, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, which I loved, you know, the last Spider-Man movie. I really love, you know, Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I feel like he's doing an amazing job, you know, in that role. And I like all of his friends, the friend characters in this movie as well. But I've liked all the Spider-Man movies. I feel like, though, uh, you know, the ones with Tobey Maguire will always be, like, my favorite. So I really loved him as the part. But I feel like, though, Tom Holland, though, is just as good. And, um, you know, I also like Andrew Garfield's, you know, the, the two that he did. But, you know, this one, though, is basically, though, about Spider-Man's character without having any spoilers. It's essentially they're, they're going, you know, his uh, class is going on a summer trip to go to Europe. And and he doesn't want to, you know, Peter Parker's character, you know, Spider-Man doesn't want to, when he goes away on this trip, he doesn't really want to deal with, you know, being Spider-Man. He doesn't want to go and have to fight crime or have to do any protecting or anything like that. He just wants to kind of have a trip and kind of get away from what he dealt with in the last movie, you know, in the Avengers, you know, um, end game. But of course, though, he gets out there and comes to realize that he's got something that he's got to, to deal with. And he's like the... The, the, what's happening out there and he kind of gets forced into it and I just really really love the movie I thought it was uh, the thing about these Spider-Man movies too is I love that they have so much humor in them especially this one I felt like it had even more humor than you know Spider-Man Homecoming and I like that they're kind of they like, have all this you know comedic aspects to it the friends have funny lines and everything I don't know I really really like you know like this series I, I hope you know I really look forward to seeing you know where the Spider-Man movies you know go in the future and everything but if you guys saw either of those films let me know, you know, in the comments below what you guys uh, thought of them. Or, you know, let me know as well, though, what movies you saw this past weekend, if you guys got to see anything as well. Into Best Buy we go. And in here, though, like I was saying, the main thing that came out, the big release, was Pet Cemetery here, the Pet Cemetery remake. And they have the exclusive Steelbook one here of that one. And that one's uh, $32.99. And that's a 4K Steelbook as well. But a cool, pretty cool image on this one. Like I said, I thought this was a cool movie. I didn't absolutely love it, but there was some cool aspects of that. And then the standard 4K, that one's $27.99. And it's $19.99 for the DVD of that one. Also, though, they do have High Life in here. And that one's uh, $16.99. But this one's definitely one would recommend you guys check out I really like that and they have Gotham the uh, fifth and final season here on a uh, blu-ray and that one's a uh, $24.99 for that one they have Hulk the, you know Hulk here on 4k and that one's a uh, $17.99 for that really good price for that like I was saying, they do have a Waterworld Steelbook here, and that one's only $19.99. So it's the same price as the one that was in, um, you know, uh, Walmart. But like, like I said, it's, it's like the main tattoo image here of, you know, to the dry land, but it's not like the coolest Steelbook. It is still pretty cool, though. Online, though, they, they said they didn't have any in. So <laughs> that's why one of the reasons I didn't get it. But still, it is kind of cool, though. Like I said, $19.99 is not a bad price for that. And they have Little here, and that one's $22.99 for that. And then they also have their Johnny Depp film The Professor, and that's only $14.99 for the Blu-ray. So that's a really, really good price for that. Like I said, this is definitely worth watching. I thought this was actually a pretty fun, you know, uh, comedy drama film here. So anyway, though, guys, that's off my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop mirror today. Let me know in the comments below, though, what you guys picked up today. If you guys picked up anything new today on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K. Also, be sure to check out the link below for the Indiegogo for the film uh, 16 Bits, so you guys can find out more about the movie, about the project, and everything. You guys can see the video all about and everything but should be a really cool movie also to let me know you know what you guys thought of all the new uh, dvd blu-ray and 4k reviews that i have at the end of this video if you guys have seen any of the movies also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys thanks again for watching now stay tuned for the, for the brand new reviews and the first one i got here is from arrow video it's a movie here called the chill factor this is one i had never seen before this is a really really fun horror film essentially though this is about a group of these friends who are all going out you know uh you know racing out and driving around on these snow skis which are basically like uh, or snow sleds which are basically like jet skis but you know instead of jet skis on the water these are like jet ski things that go across on the snow go super super fast I don't know if people really ride these things as much anymore or not I, I haven't really seen too many movies that like show these kind of things I'm sure they st are still around but they have like a real 80s kind of vibe because they're like super fast in the snow but essentially though the group of these friends are at this bar out in the middle of nowhere because they're kind of in, around these areas that are really snowy to race around on these things 
And the one guy says to the other guy there, he's like, oh, well, I I'm so much faster than you on my on the, my snow sled, and I can beat you in a race, so, we, you know, we should race each other. And they find out about this one area that's, like, from local at the bar that's, like, um, 30 miles out, which is, like, a great area to ride around and everything, and to, like, big open spaces and everything. So, of course, they all go out there, out 30 miles out in the middle of nowhere, and have this race, and the one guy ends up falling off of the jet ski, or the, I mean the snow ski, really fast, and then hits his head and knocks himself out, you know, on this tree. And essentially, though, they're out there, thirty miles out. They don't know what they're gonna do. They're kind of going, trying to figure out where they're gonna go. They can't get back into town because it's too far out and too snowy. So they end up coming across this abandoned uh, summer camp building. And when they go in there, though, there's all sorts of like satanic like things on, on like um, pentagrams and all kind of stuff like that around in this place, like just some weird stuff and essentially though something happens to the guy who you know was injured and then like um bad things start to happen to the people who are in there and they start dying and everything it's a really really crazy really really fun movie uh you know feature wise though this has a brand new uh 2k restoration here from the original film elements looks really really good here the one thing that's cool too is it has on here one of the features is the original vhs work print so it's really cool to see you know like because like the different edits and stuff like that and before they put the music in for the sound effects and stuff and like there was two characters at the beginning two like in the bar they were like dubbed over you can tell we're dubbed over and you can hear their original voices you know on this one as well so all that kind of stuff's really cool i thought that was a really cool feature on here but also on here it has a brand new commentary track on here with the special effects um you know assistant on here as well as the uh, horror writer joss hadley it has lights camera snowmobiles a brand new on-camera interview with uh, production manager uh, alexander reed as well as uh, fire and ice and on-camera interview with the stunt coordinator uh interview on here with the uh, special effect ma makeup artist on this one as well as another interview on here with the um, one of the other special effects um, makeup artists on this one as well. As well, like I said, the VHS work prints, uh, Demon Possessed uh, VHS trailer, the still gallery on this one. Also has a booklet in here, which has, you know, some pictures and stuff like that from the film. But a really, really fun movie. I really love this one a lot. It's always cool, too, when I see something like a movie that I had never seen or heard of before. And Arrow Video releases, like, really lesser known movies. So this was definitely one I would highly recommend you guys check out. Just a really fun movie the next one here from arrow video this is from the arrow academy line this is one that i just want to let you guys know was available and it's a movie here from um uh mitch uh, mit, um, mitchell Le Le these are called um I, th I think i'm saying that right mit mitchell Le leaser i think i think i might be saying that wrong but it's called hold back the dawn and this one here uh has on here feature wise it has a um a new uh, audio commentary track on here with film scholar adrian martin uh love knows no, no borders a newly filmed video appreciation by film critic uh, G. Elf Andrew, as uh, uh, as well as the John uh, Player Lecture, um, which has a career-spanning uh, interview on here with um, one of the actresses on this one, as well as on here it has a, um, a rare hour-long radio adaption of Hold Back the Dawn from 1941, as well as galleries of you know ga a gallery of original stills and promotional images on this one. Also in here though it has a booklet which has some pictures from the movie and facts about the production. All that kind of stuff as well. Like I said, just want you guys know that this one was available as well from the Arrow Academy. Now, the next one here is from uh, Shout Factory, and this is from their Scream Factory line. It's a movie here. It was a collection here, which is the Universal Horror Collection Volume Two. And this one has on here four different movies. This has uh, Murders in the Zoo, The Mad Doctor of Market Street, uh, Mad Doctor of Market Street, uh, The Strange Case of Doctor X or Doctor RX, uh, The Mad Ghoul, and I'll show you guys a look though in side here it also has a booklet which has you know some um, pictures from the movies you know each of the movies that are in here but like in, in here though i'll talk to you guys in a minute too about my favorite ones in this set my two favorite movies but i'll let you guys know the features that are on this one though uh feature wise though on, on the uh, murders in the zoo that has a new commentary track on here with um author and film historian uh, gregory william mank as well as a still gallery and that film was from 1933 the mad doctor on market street that one 
has on here a brand new steel gallery, the Strange Case of Dr. Rx. That one has a um, Lionel Atwell featurette as well as a steel gallery. And the Mad Ghoul has a new commentary track on here with filmmaker and, and film historian Thomas Reeder as well as a steel gallery. But all these ones, though, picture quality wise, really, really great transfers on these ones. But the Market Street, though, um, the, the Mad Doctor Market Street, that movie was from um, 1942. Uh, the Strange Case of Dr. Rx, that one was from 1942 as well. And then The Mad Ghoul, that one was from 1943. But my favorite movie on here was The Murders in the Zoo. And that was basically, though, about this guy who was going around and kind of collecting animals. He goes on like these expeditions to bring back animals to the the, the zoo. And of course though, like um, his wife though, you know, his wife is cheating on him and he is all kind of like cheating going on. And or any, if any, basically if anybody like looks at his wife the wrong way, or he thinks that the, they might like his wife, he basically, you know, finds a way to, to, to get rid of them. Like in the beginning of this movie, he like sews this guy's mouth shut in the middle of the jungle and ties, ties his hands behind his back. And like, um, and it also like the wife has this side boyfriend and stuff that he sort of the doctor, um, you know, this guy is sort of suspecting as well. But the one thing that was really cool about this one was too, there's this great footage of like this old zoo that this was shot at, and like you know this is from 1933 to see like the way zoos looked back then and how different they were, like how close you could get to these animals and how like low the railings were, like they were like these little small fences in front of like like some of these animals. I'm like I, I can't believe that that it was like that back then, how close you could get and like how small these cages were and there's this a really cool thing to see that but essentially though this you know, this guy is basically going and like getting his revenge using his animals and stuff and there's this great scene too in this when they have this huge party for the zoo and like they have like the dinner tables in there and like they're right around the, where all the animals are right around them and stuff it's a really really cool movie uh, The Mad Doctor and Market Street was my other favorite one as well on this set and this is basically about this guy who's doing these experiments who gets run out of town and and goes to this island and he's doing experiments there on like the people there and everything and it's kind of sort of has like a little bit like of an island of dr moreau vibe to it not like with the same stuff that's going on but like just with like, the set on the island because it's basically these people get like shipwrecked there from this boat and it can't, what they end up having to deal with this guy who's doing these experiments there but a really really cool set here you know and like i said this is the universal horror collection volume two here from uh the shout factory and the next one here is from lion's gate it's a movie here called fast color this one kind of has like a superhero vibe to this but it's kind of like a superhero vibe kind of almost like an origin to it and it also has some real like heavy drama going on it's essentially though about this girl who has left her family hasn't seen her mother in years and she's kind of on the run people are kind of pursuing her trying to find her and track her down and like um what happens though, she's in this one hotel the one day and like um, you see that she's trying to like keep from something happening and so you basically like things start to shake and there's like basically this earthquake and it's an earthquake in an area where there would never really be like an earthquake at all. So it's kind of like how is this happening and it's kind of like and it all they believe it started from this girl. So like I said, she's kind of being pursued and she ends up going back to her family and seeing her mother who she has not seen in years and years and years and when she gets back there, it's kind of like like has a heavy drama aspect to her being gone all this time as well as the mother may have a very similar kind of like um abilities as well of what what is going on because like i said throughout this movie it kind of cuts to like why she left and throughout this movie though you find out more and more and more about like what exactly these abilities are and like what they like how the kind of like how they're controlled and all that kind of stuff it's a really interesting like i said it kind of has a slight superhero vibe to it but like an origin kind of vibe to it as well as like with a heavy drama backdrop to it but really really well shot here uh really this like really well acted all around as well but on here though it has a commentary track on here with the writer and director as well as a uh, mother's perspective which is a making of fast color uh, featurette on this one and the next one i got here is from warner brothers they sent over a free copy of the blu-ray edition of this show to let you guys know that this one was available last week i showed you guys the dvd collection but this one here is the blu-ray collection here of gotham the complete series here and i'll show you guys too a look inside at the discs and all that stuff as well but this is one of those shows i have not seen all the episodes of this show over the years but i've seen a large number this is one of the 
ones that I've watched a lot, you know, when it was on TV when I was at the gym. So I watched a whole lot of these then. And this is essentially, if you guys don't know this show, this is pretty much about like the, you know, the early forms of like the characters. Like this is like follows like Commissioner Gordon, kind of all the crime that's going on in, in Gotham. And it follows like a young Bruce Wayne, you know, before he was Batman and then kind of, you know, leading up to when he was a little bit older, you know, as he was getting older and to like, you know, right when, right when Batman was kind of coming, you know, into fruition. It was kind of like that sort of like what the show is leading up to. It'd be interesting to see if they do like another series of this show, like another form of Batman. I know they're doing Batwoman, which, you know, is starring Ruby Rose. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Like, I feel like that's going to be kind of cool. I've always been a fan of Ruby Rose and the movies and stuff that I've seen her in. So I'm definitely interested in seeing that. But here, though, like I said, this is like the younger versions of the characters. And some of the characters that are in here are like uh, Catwoman, uh, the Penguin, the Riddler. And then it's like all the Arkham Asylum, you know, characters as well in there. And there's also a lot of like character actors on this show, like Jeffrey Combs, you know, who is, you know, Dr. Herbert West in, you know, uh, Reanimator. He's in the show uh, in a couple episodes. There's like a whole lot of different ones, like Paul Rubens is in here. So lots and lots and lots of character actors in this show. It's actually really really pretty cool but this one here like I said this is all five se you know seasons of the show here and here's like Gotham the complete uh, first season here and this one has like I'll let you guys know some of the features as well some of the features on this one is a bunch of different featurettes on this one unaired scenes uh, character profiles gag reel uh, DC Comics night Comic Con 2014 I always think those are really cool that they include the Comic Con panels and that kind of stuff on these uh, Gotham the complete second season here this one has um, some featurettes as well I also has on here character profiles, Gotham, you know, 2015 Comic Con panel. Like I said, those are really cool that they include these on their releases. And then Gotham, the complete third season here. This one has on here featurettes as well, as well as the Comic Con panel and deleted scenes on this one. And then um, Gotham, you know, uh, season four here. This one has um, featurettes on the show as well as the best of DC's Comic Con panels 2017, as well as deleted scenes on this one here as well. Also, the complete. Uh, all four of the seasons, the first four seasons, include digital copies as well. And then uh, Gotham, the complete fifth and final season here, this is the one that just came out. This one has never been released before. This is also available on a separate release of just this one. This particular one here, though, doesn't have a digital code in this one for those wondering. But, um... Like I said, this is the, in this one here, feature-wise, though, this has uh, three additional featurettes. Gotham Season 5, Best Moments of New York Comic Con. Um, it has on here Gotham Modern Mythology, Gotham's Last Stand, Unhaired Scenes here. It also has a, a in-depth ex exploration, um, you know, um, of your favorite DC villains on here is one of the featurettes as well. But a really, really cool set here. Like I said, if you guys are a fan of the show, this is available on Blu-ray as well as DVD, which I showed you guys uh, last week. But a really, really cool set and cool to have all these ones together here in a complete series. The next ones here are all from uh, Mill Creek and there's some really, really cool titles to show you guys. They sent over their new releases. These ones just came out today and really look forward to, you know, can't wait to show you the guys these ones. Some really cool stuff, especially the first one, which is one that I'm so excited about that this one is finally, you know, this mo particular movie is, that's included in this, in this set is finally available in the U.S. because it's never had a DVD release. And I've always kind of been hoping and hoping and hoping that, you know, maybe someday it will finally come out but this collection here is the shark bait collection here and this is the six uh, killer shark films plus a seventh bite to sink your teeth into which is a bonus film in here I'll let you guys know all the ones that are in here also though all the ones that include digital they have uh, Mill Creek has a brand new uh, digital service called uh, Movie Spree which is basically you know their brand new uh, streaming service where you know all the ones that include digital you guys can go and redeem the code and then watch them you know through uh, movie through you know, um, you know moviespree.com and they can go to your computer your tablets all that kind of stuff as well and it kind of talks to you about how you can look at it like it has on a Roku channel Amazon uh, App Store Fire, Fire TV uh, Android app on Google Play as well as there's an app on the um, you know on the Apple Store as well 
But on here, though, the movie that I'm so excited is finally out now uh, it is Ghost Shark, the movie that I'm in back when I was really heavy, when I'm riding around the jet ski, and that was a movie about basically this this shark that you know was you know killed in the beginning of this movie and comes back as this ghost and is like haunting this town and everything and like it can anywhere there's water the shark can appear so like a slip and slide you know a cup of water that someone drinks and kind of comes out of their stomach all these kind of ways and I play one of the kids in here you know the group of the kids that like you know I'm in the jet ski and stuff and I, I'm like dealing with this shark it's a really really fun movie I'm so happy this one is available uh, if you guys are interested definitely you know check this one out if you guys have never seen this before let me know you know what you guys think whenever you guys get to watch it but on here though it includes like I said Go Shark uh, has Missy, uh, Mississippi River Sharks uh, Ozark Sharks uh, Santa Jaws uh, Swamp Shark uh, Zombie Shark and then the bonus film here is Alligator Alley which I believe was filmed like directly after uh, Ghost Shark because I remember hearing them talking about that one I think they filmed that like two weeks after Ghost Shark you know finished shooting something like that but really really cool here like I said so happy that Ghost Shark is finally available in the U.S. Because a lot of people have asked me as well, too, is it ever going to come out in the U.S.? Now I'm going to show you guys a whole bunch of other new releases from Mill Creek as well. And like I'll let you guys know all the ones that include digital copies as well. This one here is the It Hits the Fan collection, which is for apocalyptic disaster movies. This one has in here uh, Tornado Warning, uh, Judgment Day, uh, Chrome Angels, uh, Ghouls. You know, Ghouls has uh, James DeBello is in that movie. Um, and then in um, you know Tornado Warning... Uh, Jeff Fahey is in the movie. Uh, Chrome Angels that has Stacy Dash is in, you know is one of the stars of that movie. And this one includes you know digital copies as well. This one here is a film starring Stephen Baldwin, and this is basically though about um kind of about human human trafficking and this this girl who's doing investigations on human trafficking going on and you know she just gets married to her you know her boyfriend they just get married and she ends up actually getting kidnapped and put into like t you know to be taken away by these human traffickers the pe traffickers the people that she's actually you know researching and like doing the story on and it's basically though about her boyfriend you know or now husband trying to find where she is and w what had happened to her and this one includes the digital copy of the film as well you know like I said all the digital copies are through, um, you know, through the um, movie spree. And the, now these two here are two new Steelbook releases here from um, Mill Creek. Now the first one here is uh, Mothra, and this is a really cool Steelbook for this one. And the, what's cool too is I'll show you guys how like um, you see the the characters down here, the girls down here, and this kind of comes up, and it has underneath, and a look on the back. This one has like the images and the information about the movie, and then that kind of comes off, you know, it's, it's done as like a slip cover, and then you see the image here on the back. But really, really cool one here, and I love the look inside. But these are really cool. I really love when Mill Creek does these steel books. But in here, though, feature-wise, I'll let you guys know what's on this one. This one has the Japanese and U.S. versions, and the Japanese version is uh, 11 minutes longer than the English language version. But it has on here, though, an audio commentary on here with authors and Japanese sci-fi historians on this one, as well as a photo gallery, you know, feature-wise. The other steelbook here from Mill Creek is a movie that stars Robert Duvall and Tommy Lee Jones, Danny Glover, Diane Lane, and Robert Urich, and it's called uh, Lonesome Dove. And this one here, this, this I'll show you guys a look at this uh, steel book here. Like I said, this one has is the same kind of thing where it's removable here and comes up and it serves on the back here. You know the features and everything. Uh, feature wise, though, on this one, this has the making of cast interviews, original sketch and concept drawings on location with the director, interview with Pulitzer Prize winning author uh, Larry McCurdy on here. And um, this one though includes a digital copy. There's no digital copy though with Mothra. The next one here, this is one I was just starting to watch. And it's a show I remember it like seeing like the cover for this one, and I had never seen it before. And it's a um, a series here, and this is the complete series, and this is a uh, Forever Night, the complete series. And I don't know where this aired when this was originally aired, you know, on TV. This is a 12 disc set. This is basically though about this like um cop who's actually a vampire and essentially though it's him kind of trying to track down this guy because it kind of cuts back and forth too to when he was he's like been around since like the 12th century since like 1223 or something it cuts in the beginning like showing him then and it's like him and this other vampire and this other vampire is kind of coming back now or he's suspecting that he is and it's kind of him like kind of tracking him down and also dealing with like other kind of cop things and other sort of vampire type things going on and all sort of like cop 
cop dramas. Like I said, I just started watching this one, but it's a really pretty cool show. Like I said, I remember seeing the covers to this one, I think like season one set and stuff like that in the past, but had never seen it before. But here's a look though inside. The discs are in here in these flippable cases. So like this is like season one, disc two, uh, disc two, season one, disc one. And it's here is the complete, it's a, you know, a three uh, season set here, which is the complete series of the show. I think it was... It was, yeah, 70 episodes on this one. And this one, though, doesn't have a... Does this one have a digital copy on this one or not? I don't think this one includes a digital copy, as far as I can tell on this one. Like I said, I wanted to make sure to let you guys know what, which ones have them and which ones don't. The next ones here are two 80s, really fun 80s films, which are both from director Amy um, Andy Sedaris. And this is uh, Savage Beach, and this is the Picasso Trigger. And they released two other you know, Andy Sedaris films. I think it was like two months back or so. These ones both, though, include digital copies. These ones, though, are just really, really fun 80s action films. Super, super over the top and like just crazy movies. Uh, you know, I, I really like these movies. I saw some of these ones years and years back, and these are just really fun movies, and I think they're releasing two more of his films, I believe in September. But these ones, though, feature-wise, on uh, Savage Beach, this one includes an introduction by the director, a commentary track on here, behind-the-scenes featurette, trailers on this one. This one has on, you know, Picasso Trigger. That one has an introduction by the director as well as a commentary track, behind-the-scenes featurette, and trailers. But really, really fun movies. Now this one here is a movie on the story of Ted Bundy, and this one includes a digital copy as well, and this is The Stranger Beside Me, and this is basically, though, about uh, Barbara Hershey's character, uh, you know, kind of, it's about how she knew, her character knew, uh, you know, Ted Bundy, and it was kind of about how she was, like, writing these true crime kind of stories, and kind of how she, like, you know, actually knew, unknowingly knew him, and kind of, like, he, the killings are going around, you know, while, you know, the serial killings that Ted Bundy was doing, why she's, like, friends with him. It was a really interesting thing. This was a TV movie. I believe this was from 2000 is when this aired. But they, like I said, this one has a digital copy as well. Billy Campbell plays, you know, Ted Bundy in this one. And the next two are IMAX releases from um, Mill Creek. This one here is um, IMAX. This is a 4K one. This is um, IMAX, an IMAX film space station narrated by Tom Cruise. This is kind of all about this, you know, kind of this great footage of, you know, in 4K of the space station. And this kind of stuff, like space and that kind of stuff really, really looks good in 4K. Because like I said about 4K in the past, it's all about like the high dynamic range and the, and the you know, the contrast levels. And like there's a lot of really dark kind of stuff in space and really like benefits in in 4k also it really benefit you know boosts the, the the brightness levels and all that kind of stuff as well this one includes a digital copy of the movie as well and it also has on here a director's audio commentary on here adventures in space interviews with tom cruise interviews with the director and interviews with the astronauts aboard so and also has on here like an audio visual tour of, of, um, you know aboard as well on this one this has you know the 4k the blu-ray and the digital copy and this one here is NASA, A uh, Journey Through Space, and this one includes a Blu-ray and a digital copy as well. And this is a um, seven um, you know, part documentary series all about like the history of you know NASA and like from the early days to like now and kind of showing all the different things and it has like for example it has like the history of flying and space race, operation liftoff, shooting for the moon, uh, the Apollo missions, after a giant leaf, Leap, the shuttle, and living in space. So it goes through all the kind of aspects. And this one has on here, though, like I said, this has a digital copy as well. And the next one here is from Movie Zing, and this one is a Sony release. And this is uh, Pacific Heights, which stars Melanie Griffith, uh, Matthew Modine, and Michael Keaton. This is a movie, I saw this one years and years back, and not seen this in a long time. This is about uh, Melanie Griffith's character, Matthew Modine, who, you know, they end up wanting, they're finally just moving in together in their first place, and they end up, you know, buying this you know, really nice house in San Francisco where it's got like um, two different areas that you can rent out, two like apartment spaces that you can rent out. And of course, they're like, "Oh, that's the only, if we if we can't rent these out, we're not gonna be able to afford this. There's no way. But if we can, we're, and it will cost us like less than we're spending now in our own places." So of course, though, you know, they think that they're gonna be able, this is gonna be an easy thing. And the first place they rent out fine without a problem. The other place, though, the the tenant ends up being Michael Keaton's character, who there's something really off about Michael Keaton's character in this. Like he's really strange, and like he's acting like he's got all this money. And you see in the beginning of this movie too, he gets like thrown out of 
someplace and beat up terribly. And, you know, he's like telling Matthew Modine, like, oh, I have all this money. I can pay you six months ahead of time. And I work for this investment firm. And wow, I, I can't tell you what it is, though. And I can't tell you my, the client because it's confidential. But I, I'll make sure you're wired the six months ahead of time. And just don't do the, you just don't do the background check. I have all this money. And there's no way you can background check my credit or anything because I don't really have that because all my expenses are covered for who I work for. But essentially, though, you know, it turns out all this stuff he's saying is totally, you know, totally not true. And, you know, they end up getting him in this, he comes into this apartment and he's not paying and they won't have to get rid of him. And it's a nightmare situation because, because he's like, you know, laid claim to the place, you know, they can't get rid of him. So it's them going through the whole thing of how they're going to get rid of him. And he's like messing with things in the place and causing all kinds of problems and causing problems in their relationship and everything. It was a really, really cool movie. If you guys have not seen this one, highly, highly recommend you guys check this out. This one has the theatrical trailer though on this one. Picture quality though looks really good here, but it's a really, really cool movie. The next one here is from Movie Zing as well. And this is also a um, uh, Blue Fox Entertainment release and it's called um, Swinging Safari. This one stars uh, Guy Pearson here, and um, it's called, like I said, it's called Swinging Safari. And this is basically, though, this is set in the 70s, and it's kind of in the basis of all this kind of beach community town, and all about, like, the kind of wacky characters that are there, and these, these wacky parents of these kids, and they're all kind of, like, what they're up to, and the basis of the story, though, is based around this, like, beach whale that, you know, washes up on the beach, and it's kind of, like, during, like, the busy time, and when they're all on this beach, and they're also trying to figure out how they're going to get rid of this beach whale, because, like, that kind of thing happens where if like a whale is like this huge whale washes ashore and you know dies they don't know how to get rid of it and so that's kind of what's going on and it's it's but it's dealing with though these kids and the kind of things that the kids are getting into and what they're doing during the summer but as well as what these parents are doing and there's all kind of like strange stuff that they're getting into and it's it's done as like a um Kind of like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's just a really, really fun movie. Guy Pierce is really good in here. They're just like really fun, like crazy characters in this movie. This is one I would highly recommend you guys check out. Just a really, really fun movie. And the next one I got here is from Magnolia Entertainment. This is an Italian film. A really, really well-acted character piece here called uh, Dog Man. This is a movie that takes place in this small Italian, you know, seaside, you know, area. And it's this guy who, you know, owns this uh, dog grooming business. And he's kind of this guy who has like these great abilities to like if there's like a really crazy dog that's like very violent or you know you would never think would be able to be calmed down you know he can calm down the dog and you know and you know has just these great abilities with animals and everything and like he also has his daughter who's taking care of and you know but he you know he's not really making too much money with this job and you know he does like things on the side where he's like selling drugs and these small kind of like things just to kind of get by but also though in the town though there's this one guy there who is kind of kind of giving you know, kind of like the bully of the town and he's kind of causing all the, this like problems with people and he's giving this, the main guy who runs the dog grooming business all sorts of problems and kind of forcing him to like work for him and like do these crimes for him and like like drive the, his car when he's like doing robberies and all these kind of things and he's like giving him all kind of grief and all sorts of problems and it's kind of about like things are get worse and worse and worse for this guy and it's kind of him trying to figure out exactly you know what he's going to do and because like things like I said just he's kind of getting walked all over by this guy and things are just worse and worse and he knows too how things are in the rest of the town for the other people because of this guy but say like I said a really really interested you know interesting well acted character piece here and like I said this one here is called Dog Man and next one's here are some German releases from Turbine Media these are really really cool these are for Texas Chainsaw Massacre Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and Leatherface and these are to look like old school school VHS tapes but these are actually the Blu-rays in the uh, tape you know in these boxes but they're done to look like old school VHS and they're all aged up I'll show you guys a closer look at these ones and I'll let you guys know which ones are region free uh, as well but here's a look though at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one here and it says on the side and like I said these are the German you know releases so they're in German here on the back though I love the way this looks how this is all aged up and everything and like on, on here too when you take them out they slide out like a tape 
And then in here, the actual thing inside too is just like a tape as well. It has a thing on the back, like the you know the winders, and look at the tape itself. I, these are really cool the way these are designed. But they open up like they have like a magnetic thing here, and then they open up and inside they have a mini movie poster as well for the movie, as well as it has like the discs themselves. Now in this one though, the uh, actual film is in um, you know is region free, so you guys can watch that one on any U.S. Blu-ray player. But the features disc is actually region B locked. You guys would have to have an all-region uh, Blu-ray player to watch the special features. But and I'll show you guys a look now here at Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I always loved this cover here. This was done to be a parody of the Breakfast Club poster. Here's a look there at the back here, Dennis Hopper. This movie though is probably my favorite of them because like I just I love Chop Top in here and I love how the movie went in this kind of crazy comedic direction. You know, uh, uh, it's like if you guys don't know that like the first movie though was about a group of people who were out you know to see this one person's house they had that they had never actually been to, and of course though the next door neighbor area uh, who lived next door was Leatherface and family and they are you know, Leatherface is going after those people going and killing them. The second one though was about Dennis Hopper's character who was going to avenge his brother who was killed and trying to track down that family. He's trying to find him for years and years. And, you know, Chop Top is like one of the family members. It's like this crazy guy played by Bill Mosley. And he, like, he's amazing. Like, Bill Mosley's performance in here, like, steals the show. Caroline Williams is in this movie playing Stretch, and she was great in this movie as well. And Dennis Hopper is, you know, like I said, he's trying to find them and, you know, find the, the family and everything. But it's a really fun comedic movie. But this one opens up, you know, comedic horror movie the same way. It has on here Texas Chainsaw Massacre here in German. Look here on the bottom. These are really, really well designed. And this one, too, has the mini movie poster for the movie as well as the discs. And now this one, though, uh, both of the discs in this one are region free. So you guys can watch these ones on any U.S. Blu-ray player. I, played, I put these all in my U.S. player to, to test them. Now this one though, this one's region lock though, so you guys would have to have a region B player for this one. And this is Leatherface, and this one is the prequel movie. So this is technically like the prequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one, even though this is like filmed like a couple years ago. But this was kind of going back, you know, and showing like before, you know, um, you know, like a young Leatherface. I actually kind of like this movie, and it kind of had like some mixed opinions, but I kind of did like this movie a lot. You know, it wasn't perfect or anything, but I thought it was like relatively decent. I mean, it's at least to me, I think it's a watchable movie. Um, but in here too, this one has the mini movie poster as well. And I like the way the thing has it here, like it's like the poster, like a like an old school theater. The way I don't know, it's really cool the way these are designed. But def definitely some very very cool releases. Really happy that Turbine Media sent these ones over to show you guys. The next one here, just want you guys to know that this one is available from Wellgo USA, and this is a sequel. I think I saw the sequel or reviewed this. One, the sequel when it first came out, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, though. But like I said, just want you guys to know this one was available, and it's called um, Margin uh, the Worm the, the wor Worm Valley. Margin the Worm Valley. And this one here is basically, though, about a guy going on, it kind of like a, kind of someone who like, like explores, like, tombs and, like, um, like a tomb explorer, he's going to try and find this um, mission to find, you know, the tomb of, a, of an emperor. And it's kind of on this island with all these monsters and these kind of creatures and stuff like that. So it's kind of him going there on this expedition and, and going you know, on this island and dealing with all the kind of creatures and stuff like that that are there. Just a fun, kind of like um, like a Tomb Raider kind of vibe, like mixed with a mummy, that sort of vibe in this movie. Like I said, though, just one of the guys know that this one was available. If you guys were interested in this one here is from well go USA and it includes the uh, Blu-ray as well as the DVD uh, in this one. And the next ones here are all from Vinegar Syndrome. These are some really cool releases here. There's four new releases here from Vinegar Syndrome. The first one here is a really cool movie, my favorite of the four titles, called Night Owl. And this is a movie it's kind of like has an art school kind of vibe to this and it's about this guy who is this, um, you know, he goes out at night kind of looking for women and stuff and he's a vampire. So he's basically finding women that he takes back to his apartment and he's drinking their blood and and like, um, he also has all sort of struggles with this too because like sometimes he finds you know people that you know girls that he really likes and wants to have a relationship with but he's like having all these struggles with not you know attacking them and not going after them and he's like and if he doesn't drink blood for a period of time he gets sick and he has all kinds of problems and everything this movie also has really really cool like club kind of music in this and some of it's kind of a little odd too but like I don't know I really like the music and the way this was shot and put together 
there. It was just had this really like low tech kind of vibe to it that I really, really liked. But the coolest aspect about this that I thought was it's a really early movie that's, you know, co-stars John Leguizamo. So John Leguizamo is in here about a, he, and he plays a character who is trying to find his sister who's gone missing and she's been missing for a couple days. And, you know, of course, you know, his sister was taken out by, you know, him, by the vampire. And he's trying to find his sister and it's kind of him going to places where he knew she went and like him trying to track down the clues to figure out if he can figure out where she is and everything. And there's some crazy stuff that happens with Leguizamo in this movie. I really, really like this movie. He gave a great performance in this as well. Like this is a really, really early movie for him. This released in 93. I feel like it was shot a little bit before then, but I feel like, I think 93 was around the time when, you know, Mario Brothers came out. I don't know if this movie though ever had like a big video release or anything. That's the only thing that's cool about Vinegar Syndrome though, is they, you know, release some stuff that's super, super obscure, you know, that like really has never really seen, like had been seen by a big audience or anything. So it's really cool when stuff like this comes out and a lot more people get to see it. But this has on here though, it's newly scanned and restored in 2K from the original 16 millimeter negative. Really, really good transfer on here. Like the best that this thing, this film would ever look. And they did a great job cleaning this one up. Has a commentary track on here with the director. And some commentary tracks on here with the actors. An archival interview with the director. It has on here though, a uh, original cast auditions on here. As well as a raw interview footage with Caroline Mar Mar you know, Monaro. Mon 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 Is it Mon... Car Caroline Monaro, who was in like some Hammer Horror films and stuff, and there was like an interview on here, which was a really interesting interview that was in this movie that was actually shot specifically for this film. And then it also has original uh, video trailer on this, but really, really cool movie here. The next one here is from Vinegar Syndrome as well, and it's a movie called The Passing. This one's kind of hard to explain, and it's another one, really trippy movie, and I was looking it up, and it said it was shot in Baltimore. I wasn't recognizing too many of the spots, but when you think a movie shot in Baltimore, you always think of like John Waters films you know he shot uh, everything he ever did you know has done and hopefully one day he does another movie that he directs but like um all of his films were filmed in Baltimore, and that's where I was originally, you know, grew up and was born. Lived there until 2010, so like I always like know that area, and it's always cool to see stuff shot there. And I also think of Don Dollar. You know, his films were that you know were, were all shot in Baltimore as well. But this one is basically though, it's kind of like a trippy movie because it kind of cuts around and stuff. And it's like starts with this guy in the middle of this alley writing something on the wall, and it's kind of like like and, and it's also a really cool font in this movie. But it's like kind of cutting, you know, the opening credit font, but it's kind of cutting to like um, him like sort of seeing his future a little bit and these people are trying to, to attack him and then it cuts to these old men who are like in this house who are both together you know uh, you know fought together during the war and like um, the one is taking care of the other guy and it's kind of deals with like um, the idea of like the transferring your soul of like someone who's sick and not doing well or dying into the body of someone young and it kind of has all this trippy kind of stuff going on it's a really really interesting movie this one here though uh, is newly scanned and restored in 2k from the original 16 millimeter negative on here has a commentary track on here with the director has an interview on here with the cinematographer it has promotional on archival gallery it has short films directed by the director it has four short films the director did as well but another one really interesting kind of hard to explain but pretty cool movie. And the, the next one here is from um, from Vinegar Syndrome as well. It's a movie called um, Punty, you know, Punt, I think, Punt, Puntney Swope. I believe that's how you say it. And this is basically, though, a... Um, it's like about an advertising company that does like advertisement, like promotional advertisements and commercial kind of things. And like it's not, and it's basically though, they're like, you know, voting on like people who would be like in person in charge of the board and everything. And the one guy who, you know, gets voted in, who they don't, think they w it would be voted in ends up being voted in and he's the one African American at the board group and this movie you know, takes place in 1969 so he's the one African American member of the board group and he kind of you know when he gets voted in he kind of goes and shakes things up at the company and comes up with these kind of crazy you know outlandish out there kind of commercials and advertising campaigns and is kind of trying to like fire a lot of people and kind of cause all kind of craziness this is a really cool you know real life like 1969 kind of vibe movie. This one is newly scanned and restored in 4K from various 35 millimeter uh, pre-print elements. Has a contact track on here with director Robert Downey Sr. A video interview with Robert Downey Sr. from 2001. A video interview with Robert Downey Sr. from 2008. A Q&A from the film screening at 2005. 
A uh, commentary track on here with the cinematographer on this one. Audio commentary with uh, film critic and historian Sergio Mims. As well as a theatrical trailer on this one. But like I said, really pretty interesting one. And the last one from Vinegar Syndrome is a movie here called uh, Taking a Tiger Mountain. Which is a early, you know, real experimental type film starring Bill Paxton. I believe this was the first film that Bill Paxton ever had acted in. You know, I always, you know, was a fan of Bill Paxton. Always loved his stuff. One of those actors that I really, really miss. And, you know, of course, you think of him from, like, Aliens and The Brother in Weird Science. Frailty is one, too, that I always loved. The Dark Backward. There's been so many movies that I really, really loved. And this is basically, though, about, like, um, these women who have, ki like, kidnapped his character and are kind of, like, um, subjecting him to all these kind of tests and like kind of trying to brainwash him and like um, kind of doing these experiment things with him and like kind of feeding him all this types of information and they kind of they're trying to get him to do something for them they're sending him on this certain type of mission where he thinks he's going there to kind of get chicks and stuff like that but they actually have a mission that he's sent on what do you know he literally she know what he's doing and this is like a really interesting movie uh, some crazy stuff that happens as well for Bill, for Bill Paxton like real different stuff for him as well on here. This one's newly scanned and restored in 4K from its 35mm telescope and uh, uh, technoscope negative on here. It has on here the uh, original theatrical version as well as the 2019 revisited version of the film. It has director's introductions to vo both versions of the film. It has on here though an interview uh, with the, you know, focused on the original version of the film with the director as well as an interview talking about the newly restored version it has, as well as a uh, interviews with Wellsman, a short film by Kent Smith as well on this one. But really pretty interesting one as well all in black and white but a really really cool early like to see an early Bill Paxton film here and the next one I got here is from Altered Innocence. It's a movie here called The Earl Prince. I believe that's how you say that. This is from the same director who also made the film Baby Bump, which uh, Altered Innocence also released that movie as well. Altered Innocence also released a movie, which I really loved a month or so back, called uh, Knife and Heart. It's a really, really great movie. It's like done like an old like giallo style, like Dario Argento vibes, and has all like the music is from, or at least most of the music is from MA3. Really, really trippy movie. But the, the director's other movie Movie, though uh, baby bump that was a really really interesting movie as well this one though is a seriously super visual film with like these some of these like sort of dream sequences and stuff it's basically though about this kid who is getting ready to go away to this school and he's like a kid who's like super smart, super intelligent, and his mother is kind of like pushing him and always trying to get him to do better and saying you could do better at this. And she's got all of her own sorts of problems and everything like that. And it's a, she's you know trying to get him to win this type of a, like a competition and stuff. And like basically though, it's like one of those mothers who's like always like trying to like sort of live through the, their kid and like their accomplishments and everything. And he just kind of wants to do his own things. And like it's also deals too with like his father kind of coming into the picture and it's all these different kind of things but there's also these like trippy dream sequences and things like that that this kid is having as well it's a really really interesting movie here uh, you know really great cinematography as well on this this one has on here though uh, feature wise it has a uh, short film on here Don't Be Afraid of the Dark as well as the theatrical trailer and other trailers as well on this one and the next ones here are all from Eureka Entertainment. Now, these ones I just want you guys to know were available. Now, keep in mind, though, these ones are all Region B locked. So you guys would have to have an all-region, region-free Blu-ray player to play these ones. These are all releases from the UK. Now, the first one here is a double feature set of two different films by John Woo. This has The Last Hurrah for Shivery, as well as Hands, uh, you know, Hand of Death on here. Now, both of these ones have brand new 2K restorations, as well as on the here they have the um, audio options of Cantonese, uh, Man Mandarin as well as English. It also has um the original Cantonese mono, mono audio track for Last Hurrah for Shivery, Origin, original Mandarin audio track for Hands of Death. It has an alternate classic English dub for Hands of Death, because that's one thing. Some of the times uh, films have like alternate versions where they would dub it over, and then a couple years later they you know did a different dub on it. And this also has brand new audio commentaries on both films on martial arts, uh, cinema authority, uh, Mike Leader, as well as a, a filmmaker, Arnie Venema, as well as it has two archival interviews on here with John Wu. And then in here it also it has, like I said, there's a two disc set and has a booklet in here, which has some pictures from the movie and like stills and all that kind of stuff as well in this one. Now the next one here is a movie here called uh, Don Bass here. And this film here has... Um, 
Uh, Feature-wise, though, this has a theatrical trailer and a collectible booklet featuring a new uh, uh, film essay by Jason Wood. Here's a look, though, inside. This also has a booklet which has some pictures from the movie and, you know, about the production and all that kind of stuff, as, like I said, the, as the essay as well in this one. And this one from Eureka Cinema as well, and this is from the Masters of Cinema series, and this is number 210. This is The Holy Mountain. And this one here is a 1080p uh, presentation here from a 2014 2K digital restoration. This has on here, though, The Wonderful Life of uh, Lini Ransfante. I know I'm saying the name totally wrong, but the, one of the um, actors on this one is a 180-minute um, you know, documentary on here, as was a feature-length commentary track on here with film historian Travis Crawford, as was a collector's booklet featuring a new essay by film, his, um, film historian Kat Ellinger and a 2004 essay by Doug Cummings from the original Masters of Cinema DVD release for this one. But like I said, this has a book of it as well in here with some pictures as well as the essay in here from the um, you know original DVD release. And the last one here from Eureka Entertainment is a movie here called Under Fire, which stars Nick Nolte, Gene Hackman, and Jonah Cassidy. This one has on here, though, feature-wise, has a commentary track on here with the director, as well as the assistant editor and photojournalist on the film, as well as film historian Nick Redman. Has a commentary on track on here with the music mixer on this one, as well as the music editor, and film historians Jeff Bond, Julie uh, Krigo, as well as Nick Reedman. And it has a feature on here, Jonah Cassidy Remembers Under Fire, as well as a theatrical trailer on on this one. This also has a booklet in here with some pictures from the movie and all that kind of stuff as well in this release. Like I said, all these ones were from Eureka Entertainment, these last four, and they're all region B locked. But anyway though guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.